Welcome back. We're going to continue with number eight on the review sheet. Um, the speed of a ball dropped from the top of the Hancock Tower increases at a rate of 32 feet per second every second. That 32 is because of gravity. So unless you're on a different planet, that number is always going to be the same. Um, today we're on Earth because we're talking about the Hancock Tower. Uh, part A, create a speed versus time graph. So it increases at a rate of 32 every second. So you can scale out your x-axis in seconds, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like it says. And then it just goes up by 32. So uh, I didn't label every single 32, but I labeled the last one um, by doing uh, 6 times 32. And that gives you 192. Uh, so there's the graph. What is the speed of the ball after 6 seconds? That's uh, the same thing as we just labeled, um, 192 feet per second. Mm, mm, mm. 192 feet per second. All right, now we're going to find the total distance that the ball traveled during this time. There's a lot of ways to do this problem. Here are two of my favorites. The first way is to find the area under the curve. It's a straight line, but we use the word curve in math to be very general. So the area under this thing. Um, well, this is a triangle. There it is. It's a beautiful triangle, lovely triangle. Um, so we're going to do 6 times 192 times 1 half, because the area of a triangle is base times height times 1 half. Um, and that ends up being, I think, 576 uh, feet. Another way to approach this problem is to remember the formula. Um, H equals 16t squared. The 16 came from the 32. It's half of 32. So uh, h is going to be 16 times 6 squared, or 16 times 36, which is, again, going to be 576. I'm going to get out my calculator. I know that you're not allowed to do this on the test, um, but I just want to check my values and make sure everything is right. Um, 16 times 36 is 576, and 6 times 192 times 0.5 is also 576. So uh, that's just proof to you that those values really end up the same. Next, uh, symbolically solve the equation below for x. Your answer should be something you could put into a graphing calculator in a single step. So we did this with the word problems, um, but you had your calculator then. So this is a little bit different. Uh, here's how this works. Um, you need to isolate the x, but you first have to isolate the sine term. So I'm going to subtract 70 and get negative 5 equals 6 sine of 2x. We can divide by 6 to get negative 5 over 6 equals sine of 2x. Now to cancel out the sine, we can't divide by 2. We have to cancel out the sine first. To cancel this out, we have to do the sine inverse of both sides. So the correct expression here is sine inverse of negative 5 over 6 equals 2x. Right? Sine inverse of sine cancels them out, but sine inverse of negative 5 6 has to stay. So then x will equal um, sine inverse of negative 5 over 6 divided by 2. And if you had your calculator and we were doing this in a trig word problem, this would be uh, what you could put in in one single step to solve this in your calculator. Number 10 uh, says draw the angle 330 degrees and construct a reference triangle if it exists and find the sine, cosine, and tangent. So 330 is down in this quadrant, right? 330 is like this. And that means it's going to be 30 more to make 360. All right, I've kind of drawn my triangle not to scale on purpose. All right, I, but I see a 30, and I think about a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the short side is across from the small angle. That's going to be 1 is the shortest side. But since I'm in the quadrant where opposite sides are below the axis, that has to be negative 1. 
The adjacent side is the square root of 3, and since it's positive x over here, right, positive x, then uh, that's going to stay positive, and the hypotenuse here is 2. Um, pay attention to the notation as I write my answers. I'm going to write sine of 330, not 30, because that would be up here, but 330, which is down here, equals opposite over hypotenuse, negative 1 half. Cosine? of 330 is adjacent over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2, and tangent of 330 is opposite over adjacent, negative 1 over square root of 3, and that rationalizes to negative square root of 3 over 3. Three answers based on that reference triangle. Again, you don't have to make your picture perfectly to scale. Don't worry about it. But do get your labels correct and do include all negatives when you're outside of the first quadrant. When you're, unless you're in the first quadrant, there's got to be a negative somewhere. Number 11. The terminal side of an angle goes through 12 comma negative 2. Again, I'm not going to draw this, try to draw this out fully to scale because 12 would be way far out there. Um, actually, I will. 1, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 12, and it's going to be negative 2. So the angle is going to be like right here. Um, I'll draw the whole ray that represents the angle. And then I'm going to use that point to make a triangle. So my triangle has sides of negative 2, has a side of positive 12. And to find this, I have to do uh, the square root of negative 2 squared in parentheses. Oop, squared is outside of the parentheses plus 12 squared. So that's going to be the square root of 144 plus 4, or the square root of 148. Okay. Um, all six trig values, so sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, is negative 2 over the square root of 148. It's going to help us at this point to take the square root of 148 and reduce it. So 148 is 4 times 37. So the square root of 148 can be written as 2 root 37. So sine of theta is negative 2 over root 148, or negative 2 over 2 root 37. That's the same as negative 1 over root 37, or uh, negative the square root of 37 over 37, rationalized. Okay. Cosine of theta is going to be uh, 12 over 2 root 37, or 6 over square root of 37, or 6 root 37 over 37. And Tangent of theta is going to equal uh, opposite, negative 2 over 12. That's going to reduce to negative 1 6. You do have to reduce that, please. Um, now I'm going to do the reciprocal values. So knowing what sine is, I can find uh, cosecant, C, S, C, cosecant of theta. Sorry, I keep jumping around here. I'm going to try one last time. Cosecant of theta. Um, that's going to be uh, negative square root of 37 over 1. I'm choosing to use like this form to flip. I can flip any of the versions on this whole row. So I pick the one that's been a little bit simplified, but not rationalized all the way. Um, secant of theta. It's going to be the reciprocal of cosine, so I'm going to choose this one to flip uh, and call it square root of 37 over 6. And tangent of theta is going to be the reciprocal of negative 1 6, negative 6 over 1, or just negative 6. So uh, here's our six final answers. Incorrect notation, right? Include the equals, include the theta. Include everything that should be included there to make it look like you uh, have your answer uh, and you know what you're doing.
Number 12, explain why the sine of 270 is negative 1. So I would draw a unit circle again uh, and draw 270 is like this. So on this circle, um, if the radius is 1, then this point is 0, comma, negative 1. Sine of theta for all theta is going to be y over 1 uh, because of this because of this picture. Hypotenuse of 1, if this point is x comma y, then the opposite is y and the adjacent is x. So this picture leads to this formula and in this point, this is x, this is y, so sine of 270 is negative 1 over 1 or just negative 1. Number 13. Find three values such that cosine theta is the cosine of 230. So let's draw 230. Here's 180. So 230 is going to be down here. And the reference angle then is 50. All right, so cosine relates uh, hypotenuse and adjacent. And the adjacent here is negative because it's like negative x. So I need to make another triangle that has a negative adjacent side. Well, I can make that triangle up here as a negative adjacent side. This was 50 more than 180. So this is going to be 50 less than 180. 50 less than 180 is going to be uh, 130 degrees. There's one answer. Now I'm going to use coterminals. So I'm going to do uh, 230 minus 360 and uh, 130 minus 360. All right, 230 minus 360 is uh, negative 130. Is that true? And uh, 130 minus 360 is negative 230. So um, that's weird, right? I had to double check on my calculator just to make sense that, that these are plus and minus. But remember that negative 130 is this direction. And so it ends up being the same as 230. And negative 230 is this direction, so that ends up being the same as 130. Um, maybe that's a coincidence just because of the way those numbers that we picked interact with 360, but uh, it's nice to not to have a mental picture so that you're not just totally suspicious of answers like that. Negative 130, negative 230, and of course 130 is the other value. Next. There is no next. That's it. You've made it to the end. Thank you guys for watching. Please come to ACLAB if you have any questions. Um, I can answer questions in class. This other side of this page, I will put up answers. Not a video, but answers. Please treat the other side like you would a test. If you can find a free hour in your life, and I know you're busy, but if you can, find a free hour and do as much of it without any help any notes, any calculators, any friends, do as much of it as you can alone. That's the best way that you're going to be prepared for the test. Do as much as you can, then go back, check your answers, study, check your notes, um, and all the stuff you'd regularly study with. Uh, good luck. Email me if you have any questions, uh, and I will see you soon.